wanted to share with you guys something I've been working on, which I think is kind of cool. If you're not already aware, Synchronet for Windows comes with its own virtual device driver. Uh, it virtualizes a UART, which is a COM port, serial port. It also emulates a Fossil driver, which is a, a slightly improved version of the BIOS INT14 hexadecimal uh, software interface uh, to the PC BIOS, which was notoriously bad, but um, if you uh, used a third-party Fossil driver, it would replace that N14 handler with a better driver and uh, a simple interface for programs like BBS software, uh, door games, to get communication without having to know all the details of what a UART is and these registers, and it's all complicated. So the uh, BIOS N14 interface was much simpler, but uh, it had some limitations, like it could only send and receive a single character at a time. It could only support some limited baud rates, I think, up to like 9600 BPS or something, 192 maybe. Anyway, and uh, Fossil extended that to uh, higher bit rates. Okay, so that's included with Synchronet BBS software for Windows. Other people have taken that. They've used it for WWIV BBS software. Um, other uh, front ends like um, Rick Parrish's um, GameServe, which you can also use to, as a front end for 16-bit BBS software. And mostly you would use Fossil. Um, you know, most BBS software, when you'd use them in this mode, you'd, you'd use a Fossil driver. But it could also be used to store up uh, door games, um, which are also uh, mostly probably using Fossil. But um, anyhow, this is cool. It's a, it's a front end, and uh, you can use this if you want to run, say, Renegade or, you know, whatever your... Uh, legacy 16-bit BBS software of choices, maybe even Synchronet version 1 or 2. Uh, so w that stuff already exists, but um, I thought, you know, a simple wrapper um, that around that driver that actually emulated a modem wouldn't be hard to do. I've emulated modems before uh, for work, and... Um, you know, my experience with BBS software means I know this uh, AT command set by heart and all that. So um, that's what I did. I created something I'm calling the Synchronet Virtual DOS Modem. And, uh, you know, I don't have the usage, the output usage here, but basically just a little command line program that you can then uh, pass it a 16 bit uh, DOS communications program. Uh, like here, let's say I'll do Renegade. And it'll run that, and it's communicating with what it thinks is a modem on COM1 is actually that program, that SVDM. Uh, and it will talk over a TCP socket. Um, right now it just does raw socket communications, but I'll add Telnet support and SSH. Um, and maybe our login or something else, maybe, I don't know, Telnet S. But, uh, you know, start with probably uh, SSH and Telnet. Um, anyhow, and that will, allows it to then communicate over the internet, you know, thinking it's just talking to a modem. Uh, why is this useful? Well, if you have this old legacy, you know, 16-bit software, um, and you want to, you know, run it on Windows, um, and you don't want it to actually talk to a real modem, you know, this is what you need, you need something like this. And there are other products, there's net modem, and I think other products, maybe commercial and proprietary closed source. Um, this is going to be an open source project. You know, it's built upon Synchronet, which is already open source. So what really inspired this was the release of uh, NTVDM X64. So if you're not aware, uh, the NT, Windows NT, virtual DOS machine, VDM, uh, was not available on 64-bit editions of Windows. Uh, Microsoft uh, chose not to do that. Um, Maybe they would have said it was impossible or something because there's no virtual x86 mode when you're in long mode on a 64-bit processor. However, built in, so into that NT VDM was a software emulated PC, which they used for uh, non-Intel architectures uh, back in the day. And some somebody leaked the uh, source code to Windows at some point, and some enterprising guys took that and said, hey, look, we can unlock this... Uh, software virtualized, uh, I think it's called soft PC code that's in the uh, NTVDM and release that as a separate package you can install on 64-bit versions of Windows. So I have that installed here. I have the a 2021 version 
Um, they have come out with new versions since I haven't tested yet. But uh, it's been working great with Synchronet. Uh, the earlier release this year included support for this uh, NT VDM X64. So if you're running a 64-bit edition of Windows, you can now run 16-bit door games and utilities, and it's just all seamless, and it works pretty great. All right, so here we have uh, Renegade running. This is a 16-bit version of Renegade. Um, and uh, if I use a Telnet or TCP client, in this case I'm using uh, SyncTerm, uh, and uh, connect to it, it's going to ring and connect. Oh, it's not going to ring and connect because I didn't run it in listen mode. So I do have to specify that I want it to listen with dash L and then what you specify the uh, what network interface, in this case zero for all, and then colon and then the port number. So I'm just going to use 5555. So there. Now it's listening on uh, TCP port 5555. And I will redo the connection. There. Now it got a ring and it connected. Um, and uh, you're going to see Renegade in all its glory running in sync term over here. So I'll go ahead and make that bigger. I'm not like a big Renegade fan or anything, I'm just using it as an example. It seems to be the one of the uh, legacy 16-bit door program or BBS programs that people like to, you know, bring back to life. But in theory, it should work with any, you know, try BBS, tag, WWIV, whatever, RBBS, I don't know, Spitfire, your, pick your, pick your 16-bit DOS BBS program, and as long as it supports... Well, it should work anyway, Fossil or UR. In this case, it's Fossil, using Fossil. Uh, Renegade, I think, only supported Fossil in their 16-bit version. So so there's that. And, like, door games work as well. So, like, here's Lord comes pre-installed. Woohoo! And, uh, yeah, you can play your door games. It's fast. Okay. Uh... Okay, so there's that demo, right? And you say, okay, cool. Um, now, it, it, it's why would I use this instead of the other like front end, like uh, Rick's or maybe someone else's? I don't know, because you want to use the wait for call screen. This is kind of cool. It's uh, it's not like a you're using some other program that then launches Renegade. Renegade's just running the whole time. Uh, so if you really like the wait for call screen, you can you can do that. And the other uh, use uh, is to run a terminal program. Okay, most terminal programs only support UART directly. Um, I think it was Telemate I saw had Fossil option, but by default, you know, they're all going to use use the UART directly. So, um, Telex was my jam, and uh, here's Telex. Now, a lot of these programs I noticed they don't like receiving data at full like, you know, local host bit rate, you know, gigabit Ethernet or whatever, uh, you know, they kind of crap out if you go over like, I don't know, it depends on the program, but about 2,000 characters per second seems to be about the limit most of these, most of these terminal programs can handle. Uh, so I can limit that, and, uh, and if I go, I go lower if I wanted to emulate like a slower baud rate, but uh, in this case I'm just going to run it with the dash R2000, so it tells me I want 2000 CPS, and uh, you know, Telex just came up like this by default. Now I think this is actually Steve Deppie's copy of Telex, configured the way he had it. Last connected to Vertrauen probably in the 80s, um, or maybe early 90s, but uh, here I am. So you can tell it's talking to the Synchronet virtual DOS modem, it's not a real modem, but you know, supports all the regular AT commands. and. Uh, you can dial with ATD and then a host name. Uh, and I'm going to connect to vert. Like I said, it's throttling it to 2,000 characters per second. So um, that's kind of dog slow. That seems like slower than 2,000 characters per second. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, I should make sure I don't have debug output enabled here. Yeah, that's what it is. It's going to my debug console. All right. So there. That should fix that. So There you go. So that's uh, I'm using Telex and um, have it, like I said, capped at 2,000 characters per second. 
So I can like download some file. Let's see. Uh, now, granted, this is none of this is perfect. There's still you know issues here and there, and um, if I if I move the mouse, I think it it, it <laughs> aborts this this transfer, or starts uh, sending data back, or drops data or something. So um, the CPS there isn't right because it uh, it's resuming, and I think it doesn't handle that very well. So let me abort this transfer and do a new file. Remember that? Remember line noise? Ooh, it's not really line noise. It's just the binary file uh, that I was transferring. Looks like line noise though. Sounds like line noise. But nah, it's just the, uh, it's not recognizing the disconnection from Telex here. Control X, Control X, Control X. How big is that TCP bu buffer? I should probably make that configurable. That would help. Might help. Anyway, that's what all this noise is. Uh, sounds like Morse code. All right, let me see. Hang up. Yeah, when in doubt, hang up. Oh, look, it's still receiving data. That's cute. All right, let's try calling it back. There, that's better. And then uh, I download some other file that I haven't already downloaded. Uh, probably that one. Yeah. I should uh, settle down right around 2,000. Well, there's a little bit of overhead, so I guess it'll be a little bit less than 2,000 characters per second. Probably 19 something. High 18s, maybe. Yeah. All right, again, like I said, if I move the mouse, I think it. Right now, it's it's something happens and it uh, corrupts the transfer. Yeah. Oh, it's resuming. Yeah, and it might be just a hack having to limit the uh, receive rate. I'm not really sure of that. There's definitely hardware flow c control for um, for transmit, you know. But uh, in this case, you know, the uh, the modem is running much faster than this software was ever tested or, or designed to handle. So, um, got to artificially limit things. That yeah, seems to be transferring just fine. All right, let's see if I can just abort that and without getting tons of noise. Not really. <coughs> All right, well, I can always just, well, let me see if disconnect works again. All right. Let me show you what? Q modem? I don't understand the attraction to this one, um, but here it is, Q modem. And I think it also needs a rate limiter. Uh, so, I don't know. I didn't really run Q modem all that much, but uh, this is a version from 1994. You figure it would like know how to do ANSI correctly, but it ain't. It for some reason wants to do everything high intensity, it looks like. Anyway, I was not a key modem user. Um, maybe you guys that know key, key modem can tell me, how do you fix that? You know, it's not like, this is not supposed to be a bright uh, bar around this status here. So, I don't know. And they all have little bit of glitches around uh, some of the artwork. Like this one, yeah. It's got some crap up there at the top. Doesn't recognize that sequence. Some sequences in the middle there. Which I, I think are supposed to be ignored if you don't support it, but it like prints it, so... Whoa. Yeah. Not a fan. Alright, what was another one that people liked? Telemate?
I think this one needs a rate limiter too. And look, okay, so yeah, you can put in your phone book the host name you want to call. Okay. Alright, that's Telemate running on 64 bit Windows connecting to a modern BBS. Uh, granted, it's, it's using raw modes. So you see here it's not Telnet, it's just raw TCP. Um, but I'll fix that and, make, and add SSH support too. Uh, Yeah, a little little hesitation there. All right, yeah, and the only terminal program that I found that seemed to not require any throttling was Bananacom. So this is full on, no rate limiting whatsoever. I know it says connect 9600, that's just, yeah, whatever. All right. Not, I might add support for more, more connect, connect codes, but it's not important. All right, there's Bananacom. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is probably the best one so far. Let me see, I think it has another quirk here. I'll get this file. It does some weird thing with that escape code. Yeah, clears the screen in the middle. That's weird. Uh, so it's tricky, you know, when you're debugging this stuff to decide is it the problem with the terminal program or the BBS software or is it the fossil driver is it the virtual modem program there's a whole chain of little you know programs involved here and uh, finding out who's at fault is kind of fun all right so uh, that's your sneak peek into uh, something I'm developing like I said it's called Synchronet virtual DOS modem for Windows SVDM it's also paying homage to uh, what Steve Deppy had something called svdmancy.com, and uh, that's virtual DOS machine. In this case, that's a virtual DOS modem. Um, but uh, yeah, I couldn't think of a better name. Um, I had other ideas like VD modem or stuff. You know, the obvious ones like V modem, virtual modem, net modem. Those are taken. So uh, SVDM. Enjoy. Synchronet, 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 the BBS program that I use, synchronet. 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 BBS software. Synchronet. 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 Synchronet.